All right. Grace and peace, everybody. Shalom. Uh, much love in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Through the power of the rock, Kakadesh. Give all glory to our Abba Yah, Heavenly Father. Thank you guys for clicking on another video. Pray all's been well. Uh, pray y'all enjoyed the last video where we discussed a little bit about Esau the Edomite and who the Edomites are today. Check that out if you have it. Um, today we're going to uh, do, do a, a, a little quick video for real, for real. Um, history of another Hebrew Christian. Um, this one we're talking about Justin Martyr. Now Justin Martyr, this is kind of somewhat of a history of a Hebrew Christian. Uh, he was a Samaritan. Justin Martyr, he lived around the year 100 AD to 165 AD. He was a Samaritan. He was born in Samaria, but his family grew up uh, pagan, more like in a uh, Greek culture and Greek philosophies um, so so he's like the offshoot basically Gentiles but he is a Samaritan so we're, we're seeing a perspective of a northern kingdom mixed uh, Israelite and how uh, his conversion to the faith and uh, what he believed in and uh, the things that he did in the second century so his uh, conversion, how he first came into the faith, because first he was a philosopher and he was heavy into Stoic uh, philosophy. But when he seen that uh, Stoic philosophy had no divine knowledge, no knowledge of a divine power, uh, he searched for uh, a different truth. Or uh, not the truth because it's one truth, but he went and found a different philosophy. Uh, Aristotle was the next uh, teacher or uh, philosophy that he studied under and uh, he found out that the teachers there was focused on money and gaining the tuition money mostly so he's seen that they didn't have the truth because the greed was there so then he went to uh, uh, Pythagorean uh, philosophy uh, but it was too many prerequisites in order to learn the actual philosophy. They said that he had to learn music first, uh, geometry, and, uh, and some other stuff. He had to learn, he had to master a bunch of other stuff before he could actually learn the philosophy. And he's like, well, I don't, I don't think that's the truth either. So then he went to another one, which was the study of uh, Plato, which is uh, Plutonic uh, philosophy. And he, and during this, uh, uh, and during while he was under this philosophy, he actually learned about the possibility of a higher power and about the spirit realm. So after this, uh, he ended up running into an old man um, who he just found, who was obviously a believer, and he actually opened Justin's mind to the prophets and how they actually spoke of these things from an older time than Plato and the Stoic philosophies and that all these things that come to pass in, in our recent time because he lived in 100 AD so Christ and all that that was very recent the apostles very recent so um, he was like all these things just happen you can go check the documents and see that they prophesied it his mind was open from this point and he converted to the faith and he became a, um, a philosopher a Christian apologetic and philosopher. He was known for wearing the philosopher's garments and going about defending the, uh, the faith of Christ against um, Greek uh, philosophers who used to talk down on Christians and, and other uh, old covenant Jews who were still under the old covenant who talked down on Christ, which is actually what I want to focus on today. But before that, we're going to talk a little bit more about his life. Um, he he had his own school in Rome and had a student named Tatian the Syrian and um, he was known by Irenaeus, Tertullian and other um, ancient uh, Christians. He has eight works that we know of but it's also possible of more works than just these that we have. Uh, there was an against Marcion that he wrote and, and other apologetic writings. So for those who don't know, an apologetic writing is where you defend the faith. You defend something. So uh, he would defend the faith against, um, 
for example, he would defend the Orthodox faith against Marcion, and that's why it would be called Against Marcion. The discussion that we're going to talk about today is called the Dialogue with Trifo. And I encourage um, all Hebrew uh, believers in Christ to to read the uh, dialogue. It's a very interesting uh, debate between uh, Justin Martyr and Trifo. Trifo could have been historically a man named Rabbi Tarfon, who was a Levitical priest before 70 A.D., and lived um, in the year 135 AD where this discussion takes place. For all those who was paying attention to my last videos, uh, 135 AD is when you have the Bar Kokhba revolt, um, where it's the, the Israelites last year in Israel or in Jerusalem before they get permanently kicked out. This dialogue that they have is basically a new covenant um, versus the old covenant or or what covenant are we under, basically. Um, Justin, I'm going to be sharing some of the the, um, the writings as well. You can read through them on your own time, pause the video and read through them. But uh, Justin Martyr, he, uh, he is defending the new covenant in Christ while Trifo is um, defending the old covenant teachings of Moses and um, uh, Justin Martyr's first point is that they both trust in God it's just who do they do it through do you do it through Christ or do you do it through Moses um, and, and that's the main point that he brings up first and he uses um, excerpts from out of Isaiah 51 and Jeremiah 31 to prove that there was going to be a new covenant and a new law, which is Christ, the, the lawgiver who was uh, prophesied to come. In certain times of the dialogue, which is very detailed, it's like a hundred and something chapters, so um, I haven't even got done reading it. I've read like half of it. Um, I'm still reading it, but from what I've read so far, it's, it's a great book to read. Um, it says, um, but at points... Uh, uh, of the dialogue, he uses entire sections of scripture to explain his point. So it's it's very scriptural based, and you'll enjoy it if you enjoy scriptures and deep uh, research. There's a list of prophecies that uh, he that he says is fulfilled. Here's a, a small list that we're gonna put up here. But uh, he does he has a debate with Trifo about some of these topics. For example. Uh, Mary in a virgin birth, which Trifo uh, says that the word virgin is supposed to be um, the word for uh, Alma for young woman, which is so funny because this same argument is still used today um, by Jews and other non-Messianics um, to go against the virgin birth today. So we see 2,000 years ago they were still debating this. We see that the reason for this debate was because the Jews or the Hebrews used the, the Masoretic text or the tradition uh, by the scribes, which was in Hebrew, and most of the Christians and, and Greek-speaking Hebrews had read the Septuagint, which actually literally says version um, in it, and there was a disagreement uh, about that. Uh, today, um, there's really no difference between both of them. The core is still in, in both. But it's it's interesting how you have that dynamic um, in, the, in the ancient days and how people would flip-flop over which version was the best to them during a certain time period. Um, other things that they debated on was things like the communion because there was, um, or the Eucharist, there were rumors, nasty rumors going out that Christians ate people behind closed doors and drank blood. But what they were really doing was uh, eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Christ through the communion or the Holy Eucharist. Um, but these rumors would get misconstrued and give people a false idea of what the believers in Christ did and practiced. So for every argument that uh, that Trifo would come up whether it was you guys don't keep the commandments which Justin would have a rebuttal for um, that they that they keep the new covenant uh, understanding of the Torah 
um, or whether it was Mary and the Virgin or the Eucharist or um, the Gentiles coming to Christ, any of that stuff, um, he would have an answer. Fulfilling the scriptures where uh, St. Peter said in 1 Peter 3, verses 5 through 16, to always have an answer um, when people come and ask you about the faith that's within you. At the end of the debate, however, they end up ending on good terms. No one actually converts to a certain side, but they leave on good terms and they set a good example for future intellectuals and teach us how we should discuss um, deep theological debates. Um, it does get heated when you read it, but they still have respect at the end of the day. And to close out, at the end of his life, you know, defending the faith for, for, for years, uh, while debating a cynic philosopher named Christians, Christians, um, you can actually look this man up. He was a cynic philosopher, and he he actually spent time arguing against Christians. Um, after he he was debuting, he was disputing. Excuse me, he was disputing with Justin Martyr one time, and they set him up to where the authorities would come, and that they would denounce him. And because it is, Justin Martyr was sentenced to get beheaded. So uh, he he ended up being martyred for the faith in 165 AD. And, and that's the, um, the life of Justin Martyr. He had a student um, named Tatian, who you can read about uh, if you would like. Um, he was orthodox for a minute and then went off into unorthodox understandings and teachings. But um, it's all recorded and you can all see it. But that's another uh, Hebrew Christian, Samaritan Christian, I, I could say. Um, and I wanted to bring him out the, to, you know, give you guys some content. Uh, another early Christian, you can see what we believed early on after the, the uh, apostles. What did the believers believe in? What were they being, what was being passed down? So with that, you know, pause the video. You can read some of these excerpts. Read the book yourself. Get that full edification. And I'm going to see you guys next video. Most High in Christ bless you all. Love you all. Uh, thanks for bumping my music. Thanks for, um, for, for just being there for your neighbor. And continue loving the Most High because he is our everything. He is the one, the holiest, that holy one. The Holy Father, the Holy Son, the Holy Spirit. You need to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Love you all. Stay blessed up. Shalom.